Hello, everybody. Jack Onstead, digital reporter, coming to you from Fort Townsend, Washington. Thanks again for tuning in for another edition of American Rejects, our series on the Seattle PI Reader blog, Video Blogging 206. Today on our panel, our distinguished panel, we have Savian Wright. Here he is, Savian Wright, all the way from Waco, Texas. What's up? How's the weather in Waco today? It's warm. Very warm. Our very special guest, the number 10 finalist from American Idol season 13, MK Novelette, with her ukulele. How are you doing? Well, I'm good. How about you? Oh, just fine. How's the weather in San Francisco? It's the same as it always is. It's super hot and warm in the morning, and then two hours later, there's a bunch of fog and it's pouring rain. <laughs> now, yesterday, wasn't it raining? It was sunny in the morning, and then it rained, and this morning it rained, and now it's sunny. Springtime yep. in San Francisco. <laughs> it's like all year in San Francisco. <laughs> Well, you kind of blink your eyes in the springtime, and it's it's cold, and then you got close to summer. Nice, nice warm weather, right? Yeah, definitely. So you have a you had your ukulele up. Uh, can you give us a little light? Can you give us a little tour around your ukulele here? This is my ukulele. It was an amazing gift from a friend of mine for my birthday. I think my 18th birthday. Um, pretty sure. Um, but yeah, this is my little ukulele. It doesn't have a name. I'm definitely down to take suggestions on my Twitter for my name for my youth. So Twitter, uh, why don't you get your Twitter URL out there? And how long have you been on Twitter? Well, actually, I just learned how to use Twitter, um, like about a month ago. Uh, my Twitter is just mknoblet, no spaces, no underscores, no periods, just mknoblet. Um, super simple. And my Instagram is mk underscore noblet. So are you staying pretty up to date on tweeting out to your fans? I try my best. I think I'm not as good as I should be at it, but um, I'm getting there. And Savian, we yeah. can give you an opportunity to plug your Twitter account. Okay, well, my name is at Savian J. Wright. And, yes, there it is. It's up here. I put mine at the top so it can be seen more visible. That's smart. That's smart. You're always thinking. That's a college. So, uh, MK, tell us about your American Idol experience. Can you start from the very beginning? How did you audition? Well, I was. I didn't even know that it was actually coming to San Francisco this year at all. And uh, my aunt called me because she's a big fan of the show, and she was just kind of like. It's coming to San Francisco. You should definitely audition. It's going to be a cool experience for you. Um, I think you'll go pretty far with it. And I was kind of like, okay, like that's you know that's cool. I've never thought about it before, but sure. So the next day, I just went down. I signed up at the ballpark, and um, I went to the auditions, and um, I got a golden ticket, and it was insane. And I went kind of crazy a little bit because I had, I just like had no idea what to expect, and then. Uh, <clears throat> Just, things just kept going and going, and it was just a wonderful experience. I met amazing people, like Savion, for example. Um, we like there's so many amazing musicians, so many good songwriters, and like amazing people. Like I, it would be so hard to be a judge on that show because I would not be able to let go of half of the people that they let go. Like that would be impossible for me. Um, so yeah, we had a lot of good talent this year, and um, the experience was just crazy. After Hollywood Week, Hollywood Week was so rough. No sleep, but it was like a also a really big blessing. Like at the same time, um, and then after Hollywood Week, just going back and like starting the live shows and all that was super fun. Um, doing the Randy workshop was also really cool. It was like a new addition to the show that actually like really worked out pretty well, I think. Um, and then just the live shows. The first live show was just like the point where it just clicked in my head that I was like really doing what I love to do, and like this is like what I was meant to do. And then I just kind of went from there. Um, talk about getting the golden ticket. Now you you were going with what two thousand, four thousand, sixteen thousand. What was the number in San Francisco? Kind of like open open call. 
Um, actually, I don't know how many people were there. There was definitely a ton of people, though. And, um, yeah, I, I just, like, I was in there. That was, I think, the point where I was the most nervous out of all of the times was at the ballpark at the very beginning. Um, because the golden ticket was just, like, I, I don't know. There were so many people that it was, like, this is insane. I mean, there's people were standing in front of me in line and standing next to me just, like, wailing, singing these, like, beautiful things, like, amazing. I was, like, oh, my God, this is insane. There's no way. But, like, out of all these people, like, uh, but then I, I just got up there and I sang and I, I did it, so. So yeah. did you sing before producers, before you sang before the judges? Uh, yeah, we did. And uh, how long were you at the ballpark? What time, okay. what, what time in the morning did you get there, or did you get there in the morning? We got there at 5 a.m., so I was there at 5 a.m., and then we went in at about 8, and then... I waited until about two two thirty, and that's when I sang. Five a.m. That's that's pretty serious business. What time did you get up to get there at five a.m.? Um, well, luckily I live in San Francisco and like not too far from the ballpark, and we just took a cab, so it wasn't actually too bad. I just had to get up like an hour or like a, a half an hour before. I, some of the people that were there like came from like Sacramento and like all those places, Vallejo, Palo Alto. Like those people had to. Drive, like, those people were up at, like, 2 a.m. to, like, drive out here, which is ridiculous. Um, so that was pretty cool. I met some people that came from L.A. down here the day before for the audition, and that was pretty cool, too. So you stand in line, you wait to get in for three hours, 8 o'clock, they let you in? Mm-hmm. And so what do you do? You, you go in and you stand in line again? Is it all about standing yeah, in line? It was in the ballpark in the Giants stadium this year, so we kind of just sat in the bleachers um, and just waited. And did you get a number? I did. Do, do you have that number? Do you remember that number? Yeah, my number was 7240. No, 7420. That's what it was. <laughs> Is that significant at all? Were you like, was that the, the, no. the contestant? It's just a number. <laughs> Seven four two zero. That's your number. How about yeah, you? I mean, now. It's <laughs> how about you, Savian? Can you tell us what your experience was like? Luckily, I didn't have to do the like ballpark or a stadium. Uh, I, uh, me and a, like a, a couple of people, like uh, Alex, and I'm pretty sure. Let me see, John Fox. There were a couple of people um, who did online auditions. So I was lucky enough to all I had to do was do an online audition. I didn't have to I didn't have to go to a stadium or anything. So that was that was nice. But uh, I feel like I feel like it's kind of after I feel like after you get there with the producers and stuff, yeah, you start to see like uh, like she said, you start to see some really talented people and you're like, wow. So this is what it's like, and you get to like experience you know other talented people and stuff. So yeah, I don't think it was as Inventive, uh, like or eventive, you know, like it, um, with just doing an online audition. But I still, I'm glad that you know, because the way I did it, I was like, well, you know, I'm just gonna do an online audition. You know, I'm in Waco, Austin is close, but I wasn't there during the time that they were doing the audition that summer. So I was like, okay, well, there's still on, online auditions are still open, so I might as well just do it. And so, luckily, one of my friends, like, made me do it. He was like, hey, dude, you can do it. You never know. So I did it. And now, you know, I'm, I got to meet all these people and got to, got to meet, like, people like MK and, you know, pretty much the whole top ten. So that's really cool, like, that, that they actually, you know, watch the online edition, too. So. Do you remember when you guys first met? Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, I do. Who wants to tell the story? MK, why don't, you, why don't you tell the story of meeting Savia? All right. Well, I just remember. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I I remember. I he sang a song that he wrote for his brother, and mm -hmm. I came up to him afterwards and I was like, Hey, dude, that was a really awesome song. I want to hear the whole thing when you have a minute. And um, so yeah, I think that's that's how we met. That's exactly. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. Like, and it really stuck stuck out to me because she was like one of the only people who was, like, really interested in hearing the whole song. Like, everybody was coming up to me like, oh, it's a good song. But, like, she was the only one that was like, oh, my God, I want to hear the whole thing. Like, I don't just want to hear, you know, that little 
one second snippet of what you're saying because Harry stopped you. She actually was like, I want to hear the whole song. Like, I want to hear all the I mean, once yeah. when you hear a song like that, like that song made me cry. Like when you hear a song that makes you cry, like you gotta hear the whole thing. Like you can't just like listen to a second of it. Like yeah. you see, and that's that's one reason why it would call my attention is the fact that you because you kinda you weren't just like I want to hear that song. I want to like. I want to like. I want to listen to the lyrics of that song, and that's what caught my attention because I can tell now that you're a lyric person. That you yeah. you, like to, you like to look at the. You like to like hear the lyrics before you actually listen to the jam of the song. That's why you when you said you liked Alan Stone, I was like, yeah, she's a lyrics person because Alan Stone is an amazing songwriter. Yeah, he's about the lyrics before the sound. So, like, it caught my attention with it, and I was like, man, okay, I think I think we're going to be friends. I can see Yeah. That. I'm actually super excited that you brought that up. I'm going to see Alan Stone's concert tomorrow. Oh, so, man. I'm going to go That's... see him. Yeah. Are you uh, going to get a VIP pass and meet him? I'm trying to. I tweeted him, and I'm going to tweet him again. <laughs> He tweeted um, me. Be so I'm gonna scary. try to, but he he knows who I am. He tweeted me um, after I sang Satisfaction, oh. so I'm gonna um, hopefully he'll like recognize me or something, and I'll be there. Mm -hmm. You know I'll be at the front because you know I won't leave that show till I get to the front. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Oh man. So talking about tweets, let's talk about the tweet you got from Ellen. Me. Yeah, didn't you get a tweet yeah, from Ellen? I did. Um, at the time, I had just set up my Twitter, so she just put it on her Twitter. I, if she didn't know my Twitter handle, um, I had just made a Twitter. But my actually, um, it was actually really cool. She said to like watch out for me, and that I was the first openly gay contestant on the show, which was pretty awesome. And then she talked about me on her show with Harry, um, which was really nice, and uh, I really appreciate that a lot. I mean, I, I've been watching Ellen um, since I was a little kid. I mean, I, I look up to her. She's, she's really dope. She's so funny. So. See, that's what's so cool. Like, and and I was, because I was telling Ben that, like, y'all were, like, first out of, like, all 13 seasons of Idol. Like, think about that. Like, this has been 13 years of Idol, and yet there's still time to have first. Like being Ben was the first person to ever do a guitar solo on Idol. Like yeah. that that's big. And then you being the first openly gay person on the show, like yeah, obviously everyone knew that Adam Lambert was gay, but he wasn't open about it. But still, like you having, you know, having the guts and yeah, I know, you know, people I mean, just you know, people talking, uh, that was one reason why Adam Lambert didn't want to come out. But I mean, the fact that you have you know the courage to go ahead and you know say you know I'm gay. I mean, it, it's sad that it's still a big deal you know now in 2014. But you know you're a first, and that's that's a really cool thing that that and then you're the top ten, you're going on tour. You're yeah. About to, you're about to go to probably 20 or 30 cities and sing your heart out. That's awesome. Like the fact that you can do that. Yeah, I mean, I think that the reason that I came out on the show, like, I, I didn't do it at all because, like, I thought it would, like, get me publicity or anything. Like, I had no idea that it was going to blow up like that. Like, that was not my intention. They said on the show, like, I'm, I'm very obviously gay, like, no matter what. Like, even if I didn't say it, like, everyone would have known anyway. Um, but aside from that, uh, I think, like, I understand why the other gay contestants on American Idol in past seasons haven't said it, because in, in the reality of the situation, it doesn't really change your music at all. Um, like, you, it's not like you're, you're gay and you're a singer, but you're not, you know, like, it doesn't, those things don't intertwine at all, and it doesn't make, change either one. One doesn't change the other, um, unless you, you want it to, and I think, um, uh, for me, what they were telling us is, like, you know, really, like, put yourself out there. America wants to know who you are and, like, know about you. And if America wants to know about me, I mean, I think that's the one thing that I'm very proud about. I have gay parents. I've grown up in the gay community. I've done a lot for the gay community. I've worked for the gay community. And I'm also gay. So it just sort of, like, that's been a big part of my life um, since I was a little kid. Um, and so I feel like it's important. It's an important factor about me. So if, if people are, you know, going to say... Um, like, and if America's going to know me, then they need to know that and know that I'm proud about it, not that I don't want anybody to know, because I, yeah. that is important to me. So. Because it's a part of you. I mean, just yeah. like you did. You've had it all your life. 
Yeah. I think a really cool thing um, also, if you – and I probably you, – if you probably looked back and noticed, like, uh, when they were when, – when you when you were actually singing for the save, did you get to see who was actually really rooting for you in, in the judges' table? Yeah. I mean, it was definitely – it was definitely – I don't know. That was that was such an incredible moment. I just really like took it all in, you know. Like was like I'm here right now. This is what I'm doing, and like be here right now, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so what I noticed, what I noticed, and uh, like just when you were singing, I noticed that J Lo was just like she was like she was really the one sticking up for you. She was just like, no, no, I don't want her to go. She doesn't deserve to go yet. And I, I kind of, because I was kind of, I was trying to read her lips whenever they showed her again. But I remember her saying, "No, like, no, let's not get rid of her again." So, and, and it's really cool, like, to see that, like, that you have, you, know, you have a judge on your side that was really rooting for you. And then she even said it, like, she was like, "I love your vibe, I love your style," and which brings, which brings me to that question that Jack is probably going to bring up. Is you know what is your style in music? You know what what do you want to do? What type of what type of style do you see yourself going into? What type of music? Um, man, dude, I mean, I love horns. You know, like I love I love all, all all kinds of things. I love strings and I like horns. I want like a big band. Like I don't want like a little like drum, bass, and guitar type band. Like I want like a big band, you know what I mean, like, all this all horn section, like, I just, like, I, I just, like, see myself, like, rocking out with all these people, man, like, I love being surrounded by amazing musicians, like you said, how I asked you, I'm a lyric person, like, but not only a lyric person, like, I like, you know, I like all that part, I'll pick little parts out of songs to listen, and I'll be like, oh, that violin, you know, and when I was recording the Pink song, that was what I, I was saying, I was saying, like, this is so important, like, the violin part in the song, like, that, it, like, makes the song, you know, like, I love the violin part. Um, so, like, you, you know, you gotta, like, you gotta pick and, you gotta pick out, like, all these things, because, like, if you really break a song down and, like, listen to every little thing in it, there's so many things that make up a song, and, like, I don't know, I, I just love, I love music, and, like, I would just, like, love to be surrounded by all these amazing musicians doing all these different things and, like, just, like, jamming out with them. I mean, that, that's, that's how I envision my music career going. Can you talk about the jam sessions that you participated in with the other Idol contestants? Um, yeah, I definitely, we jammed out all the time. Like, when we weren't at the studio or, like, doing something, it was, like, constant jam sessions. Um, uh, me and CJ are amazing together. Like, we sound so good together. It's ridiculous. I love playing with CJ. Um, Gina and I have really similar music tastes as well. We listen to a lot of the same stuff, and that's a lot of fun. We had a good time too. Um, I feel like um, there's a there's just a lot. Like everyone just jams, and it's constantly like someone will just pick up an instrument, and start playing it, and everyone will just start singing on it, and it's just super fun because it's it's not like it's not even competitive at all. It's good to have like that relationship because it is a competition. Like you have to it, even if you don't feel like angry or like really in like people I feel like we are com competing against each other but at the same time we love each other and like are going to support each other um, but like behind the behind the stage and like behind everything like just back at the hotels and and just um, when we have free time and stuff it's constantly just like it's not a competition at all it's just a giant jam session and like that's I think the best part about Idol is like just like you are surrounded by these amazing musicians and like you're you're like it's some of the best music I've ever made in my life with these people. So, like, it's actually, like, a pretty good time. Yeah, it's like you're in a family band. It's like, it's really a family. Idol, like, a, people, a lot of people are like, you know, they don't get to see the really, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff, you know, even with, like, the crew and stuff, the cast and crew. Like, yeah. crew, like, they're, like, they're here, they're really there for you. Like, and you gotta, like, and you, just, you can, know, like, you can notice that uh, with, you know, a lot of a lot of the people there, like they really care about you, and you know, you know, even though making it to the top forty-eight and not knowing what it would be like in the top ten, but still, like even though we were there for Hollywood Week, you could tell that they were there for you. Like they were like, "Hey, this is what you should do. Hey, you need some help on something." So like, it's really good to you know have that. I mean, 
having a, like having people like you know your contestants around you, like your family, who support you, even though it is a competition, but it's yeah. not. It's like a competition, but it's not like a competition. It's like you don't want it to be because yeah, you see so many talented people, you're just like, gosh, you know, like, yeah, play. <laughs> It's it's just a lot of it's a lot of fun, but also hard work. But hard work seems a lot easier when it's fun. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's really hard. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, you put in a lot of work, and we're up at like weird hours and like doing crazy things and like constantly busy and all that. Like, it's hard work, but you're with people who are amazing and just awesome to be around. So it makes it like ten times easier. Just like it makes something really hard to do a lot of fun. So it's like. It's just like a perfect situation to be in. <laughs> on on Wednesday night, when you're finished with your performance, do you guys all cram into um, a limo and go out to eat? And if so, yeah, can, can you talk about to, that? We go back to the hotel and eat uh, eat a dinner and just like reflect on the um, on the show and like talk about what like what went good and what went bad or like something funny the judges said or like if we don't understand a comment. Um, that the judges said, you know, sometimes Harry used big words and people were like, I don't know what this means. So we have like discussions about that or like, you know, right and wrong things to do, like how we were talking about that one time when uh, Majesty was saying, like, I don't know when it's okay to go flat or go sharp or whatever. Um, like they keep on like saying like sometimes it's okay but sometimes it's not. And um, really I think like a lot of what it comes down to is like it's an artist's opinion because I know that they're judges, the judges are professionals and they're musicians, but at the same time, they also have opinions like anybody else. And so when you, when they say something to you that is their opinion, so like when Keith says something and Harry completely disagrees, you can't, you can't be there and be like, well, I don't know which one to do. It's like, do whichever one you feel is right, you know? Like, listen to whatever one you feel, because like, they're just saying their opinion. So it doesn't necessarily mean that they're right or wrong. You talk about Harry. Can you kind of give us a critique of his performance on stage? Um, I think Harry. Like? I think Harry's a fantastic performer. I I like him. I mean, he he stands and sings pretty. I mean, he's he's a wonderful musician. And when he, I think he he really emotes and like loves the piano. Because when he was standing up there, he had this look on his face like he really believed what he was singing, and he was like really into it. And you were like, "Damn, Harry, like that's pretty cool." And then. <laughs> When he sat down at the piano, he just like goes all out and goes crazy. Yeah. Like he he stands there and he sings really pretty and he's like sort of saving up this like you don't even know what's coming. <laughs> like you know, like he sort of saves it up and then he sits down at the keys and he's all over the place, just like going crazy and it's the coolest thing to watch. I mean he's he's a great he's a great musician. Yeah, he's so, something different. I'm and Sabian, so you were there to watch the performance live. Uh, tell us about his performance. Oh, I loved it. See, like and that's, and that's one thing, if you go back to my first audition, like, he, he was actually like, you know who I am? And I'm like, yeah, like, because he's from the same area I'm from, so I know that gospel, jazz, blues type of type of swing music, because yeah, I grew up on it. That's the type of music that my parents listened to. So I grew up listening to him, and then having that chance, you know, to actually hear him, that was like, oh, my God. It's so crazy. Like I actually get to hear him sing now like, after all these years, like playing his music on the radio, like playing or hearing it, you know, on a CD, and like getting to hear him. I thought that was really cool. And yeah, like what MK said, like he's he's. It's funny when you see him without the instrument, and then when he gets on the piano, he's a totally different person. Like he's like he's so smooth. You know, he's so smooth, and like he's just really like Sinatra. He's like Sinatra without, like, you know, when he doesn't have the piano. And when he put it, when he gets that piano, it's like he's a total different person. He's like, he's basically like Little Richard or, you know, or like some, you know, amazing, like, he's an amazing pianist. I mean, you can feel that gospel jazz influence that he has on the piano. So I thought it was really cool to finally get to see him. That was a great, great, great. Yeah. He was really good. I, I I was sort of relating it in my head. I went to see Dave Brubeck um, when I was a young kid. What? Uh, yeah, I went and saw Dave Brubeck, and he he's super old, you know what I mean? Like, super mm -hmm. old guy. Walks out on stage, like, with this cane, just, like, 
while like hobbles to the piano, doesn't look around, like doesn't say hi, just like kind of walks up there like shaking, and then gets to the piano, and it's just like crazy. I'm like, how do you do that, dude? Like, it's insane. And I feel like that's a lot of people at the piano. Um, like see. people with their instruments, like they sort of like get outside of their element and they sing and they're standing there, and then they get their instrument and they're like, yes, like I fit. You know what I mean? Like. I don't know. I feel like sometimes instruments just like bring out you, like who you are as a musician. And yeah, I think that Harry is definitely one of those people. Yeah. Take five, Dave Rubick. Love that song. Me too. Okay, we got a question from one of the fans out there. Um, what is it, Miranda? She wants to know what about uh, what about the tour? What are you looking forward to the most? Um. Well, Miranda, I am looking forward to performing for all of for all of everybody. I mean, I just like it's gonna be such a wonderful experience. And I think like what we were talking about earlier about how like I need to work on emoting or like maybe maybe I do, maybe I don't. It's still like a, a weird topic. I, I feel like um I feel like tour is gonna really bring that out. Whatever I need to do to make my performance feels a little better, whatever that may be, um I think that Tour is going to bring that out so much, and it's going to be such a good experience for me. And, like, it's going to push me really hard, and I'm actually really just excited to for Tour to, like, round out my performing skills. Let's, let's talk about the elephant in the room, your stage fright. Uh, when you were on Kelly and Michael, uh, you talked about taking beta blockers for your stage fright. Mm-hmm. Talk about that. Um, well, I don't take them anymore because um, there were two times on Idol when I didn't take them. Um, I didn't take them for um, A Team in Hollywood Week, and I didn't take them for um, the last All of Me. So um, I feel like those were good performances, and I feel like I sort of I, I needed them at first. I think just to like get me up there and, like, get me, like, not, like... Because I used to... When I was younger, I used to um, just, like, shake. Like, I was just so scared. I was, like, a little cold dog. It was, like, ridiculous. <laughs> um, but I feel like it's gotten a little better. Um, and I think the reason that I had it so hard in the beginning is because I went to... Um, I went to School of the Arts in San Francisco. Amazing, amazing school. Um, and my director, Todd Wedge, who's this amazing, amazing singer, he... Um, He's really great, and we mostly sang classical music, which I love, and I think it's amazing and wonderful to have a classical background no matter what you're singing, because I just think it's important. Um, but at the same time, I wasn't, I, I don't think that classical music is where my heart is. So when I had to perform on stage and sing classical music at, at School of the Arts, I got really nervous and like, really like I ju it just wasn't. It was hard for me to put myself and my feelings and my emotions into that type of music. So when I was singing it, um, I, I, got, I just got really scared. Um, and I think um, now that I'm singing what I love to sing, and like, I mean, hopefully it'll end up being originals, which will be even better. Um, like all of this, it's just like it's just where my heart is. So I think it's just getting ten times better. And I think that's where it started, though was starting in um, starting classical music was really hard for me to to get into um, and I think that that's why I got such horrible stage fright because I started in uh, started performing on a stage with something that I wasn't madly in love with <laughs> and so you would take these beta blockers to calm yourself down is is that how they work yeah, they kind of just, they, they just sort of block your nerves. So you just kind of, if you, like, for example, if you were to take a beta blocker, um, they're not very strong, so it wouldn't really do anything. But if you were to take a beta blocker when you weren't nervous or not performing, you would just sort of, like, sit and just sort of relax, you know. just uh, You're just sort of relaxed and you don't really, you, you don't get excited. You don't, like, get, it's just very relaxed. So it's, that's all. So do you think that uh, Harry saw that in your performance and said it doesn't look like you want to be here in terms of that the, the stage fright? Um, I do. I think that he sort of saw that. Um, but at the same time, I think that mostly what he what he thought is just maybe that um, 
he told me that I'm a really good recording artist, um, and I think that maybe he just saw that I wasn't, like, he, I think he thinks that, like, I'm not maybe meant for a television show, which I, I sort of, um, I don't know if I agree with that. I think it was, like, a challenge. I never thought I would be on a television show, so it kind of just, like, came very suddenly. Um, but I think that he thinks that I'm a good musician. He just thinks that a television show is not, um, not where my heart is. <laughs> Before American Idol, what was the largest audience that you performed for? Well, I, perf I performed at San Francisco Pride, so... Uh, overall, I say that the audience was around, um, I don't know, like ten to twenty thousand people. And do you have a picture? I do. I actually do. I brought a picture of me performing at Pride with my awesome drummer Judy Grayboys. And about what age were you? I was. Uh, how old was I? I was fourteen or fifteen, something around there. And is that an electric guitar that you're playing on stage? That is a guitar, actually. What do that you remember? That is definitely a guitar. What What do you remember of that experience? What did you sing? Um, I sang. The oh, there he is. Okay. Um, what did I? Say? There he goes. I sang a couple songs. I sang uh, a pink song, actually. Um, I sang a pink song. I sang um, Alanis Morissette. Um, I sang a Melissa Etheridge song, and I sang a Cheryl Wheeler song. And I think I think those were the ones I did. I probably did other things too, but it was a long time ago. I don't remember. Did you do uh, "I'm the Only One" by Melissa Etheridge? I did. Uh, I thought so. I love that song. <laughs> that is the one I did. Did Pink uh, reach out to you at all? I, I know that you sung one of her songs. Uh, I don't think I don't think so. Not yet. Maybe on tour. Would Maybe. you like to meet Pink? I would love to. She's an inspiration. I mean, I think she's like such a cool. I think she's such a cool cat. I mean, I would love to meet her. Uh, getting back to Ellen. Uh, she tweeted you. Uh, has she invited you on her show? Um, no, she hasn't yet. Um, but she did tweet me, um, and she talked about me on the show with Harry, which was really, yeah. really nice. And I, that was kind of like an honor in a way. I just like I've always liked her. I'm, I read, I read her blogs, and I watch her show, and uh, so that was really cool. All my friends were super excited about it, which was like super cool. Um, and it was just, it was awesome. I mean, it, it was cool to have someone so important and um, inspiring um, to acknowledge acknowledge my, my musicianship, which is really awesome. Uh, wh what happened during your American Idol journey that you didn't expect? I mean, I kind of didn't expect any of it, really. I, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I haven't really seen... Of the show before this, so it's it sort of like all just pretty new. Tonight, uh, the contestants are going to be for performing. This will be the second time you're at home. What's it like to watch the show at home since you were so closely connected with it? Um, it's it's super exciting, actually. Um, it's fun to like know. I think like, I know those people. They're my friends. You know, I can I can like watch them and then I can text them later and be like, "You did a great job tonight," or like you know, anything. I mean, it's it's just cool to like be able to give an outsider's perspective, um, but one that like actually matters. Because I think, I mean, not that I mean all of the comments matter, but like after the show, this half we have tons of people giving us feedback on all kinds of things, and like a lot of them are very conflicting, um, uh, like all over social media, which. It's probably best not to read most of the time, um, but to like have I know for uh, for me after I was still there, I, I had a couple of people who were contestants text me and say like, "You did great. You should maybe work on this a little bit, or like maybe like this was a little over the top, or you know." I think like I really value constructive criticism. Like I really like it um, because I I just have this attitude. If everyone just tells you you're good all the time, then like 
you're never going to change anything. You know, like you need that, and that's why. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm grateful for it. So I mean, I, I just think it, it's cool to have that outsider's perspective, and I'm glad I can like hopefully like be that person for other contestants. Is it a big event? Do you like? Does your whole family gather around the TV set? Do you record it? Do you watch it back? What's the experience like for you now? Um, the experience is actually like it's it's pretty fun. Um, we don't watch it as like a group anymore because everyone works late and. Um, you know, there's there's other things again in the way, but I definitely watch, and my family watches, and we record it. So if mm -hmm. uh, if someone misses it, we can you know watch it the next day. So we're definitely supporters. Do you vote? Um, I do not vote actually. Uh, Emily uh, votes, but she votes for everybody. Yeah, uh, that's cool. Kristen does not vote. So uh, and and you, Savian? Uh, I do vote you for everybody. <laughs> you vote for everybody. Yeah. Well, because I know them. That's the reason why I want everybody to make it. <laughs> but you, you, you have a top ten. You have a top three and a and a, and a bottom three when you watch. Yeah, I do a top three, bottom three, and, but I still vote for everybody. And how about you, MK? Do you have a top three, bottom three? Do you separate them out in terms of their performances? I mean, I I just like being being an insider on the thing. Um, what people see is they like they see one performance and then uh, and then they they base their opinion off that person, off like the one performance that just happened, you know. And I think that's like a lot to do with um, with how you get voted off and and what happens. And I think like there like for example, what is like last week Caleb like has a really strong performance. And then this week, Caleb's performance isn't as strong. That's going to affect him. And I yeah. think that like people should probably put like all of their um, all of like their performances sort of into consideration when they're when they're voting. And I I don't vote because I think that um, I feel like everyone needs a equal chance. And yeah, I could vote for everybody too. But like I I don't think that makes a very big difference. Like if I vote for everybody or not vote, it's kind of the same thing. So. We have another fan question. Here we go, Joni. Uh, she sent you some some email uh, a few days before you were eliminated. Do you know when you'll be getting your your fan mail? Um, well, I don't know if they send it to us personally after it goes. Uh, they I, they might send it to me now. I definitely wouldn't have gotten it um, at the studio, but. Um, if you sent it, hopefully they'll send it to me, and then I will reply to it. <laughs> Do you have an address fans can send you mail and um, other the items? Address, the address is on is online. I will post it on my Twitter and I will post it on my Instagram. I don't know it right now by um, by heart, so I have to I have to look it up. But I'll post it today. Now you have a Facebook page too, don't you? Um, I do have a Facebook page. It's just MK Noblet, um, and Plus my Facebook. And do you use it to communicate with your fans? Um, I'm very Instagram oriented and Twitter oriented. I have I'm 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 getting there with Facebook, but uh, it's a little bit more complicated. <laughs> more complicated. So the two networks that you're using right now, Twitter, Instagram. How about YouTube? Um, I don't have a YouTube page. Um, I'm also not allowed to post videos right now. So. After her tour, I will be all over YouTube, and I will post my YouTube channel that I make on my Twitter and my Instagram and my Facebook. Now, if you want to do a blog and not have anything to do with music, can you post just venue, venues from your your life, like a video blog? This is my day. It's raining in Cal in San Francisco. That sort of thing. Or yeah, I I think I could I could definitely do that. Um, I think. Um, I could also do that on the uh, social media that I have right now, too, though. Because today, well, this is April, which is called VEDA in the YouTube world. VEDA stands for Vlog Every Day in April. They also have it in August, Vlog Every Day in August. So um, this is a good time to start vlogging, as they call it, uh, in April, because everybody is starting out at the, at the very beginning. Uh, so people that have got fan mail, check 
out uh, MK's Twitter account, and she will be posting an address for you to send mail, right? Yes. Money, okay. necklaces, <laughs> rings. Now, you got a necklace. Did you get a necklace from, uh, oh, one of the American Idol contestants, the big country singer? Carrie Underwood. Carrie Underwood, that's right. What? Did you? I did. I did. I got a necklace from Carrie Underwood, and it was very sweet. Um, it was probably one of my favorite things that I got. Um, it's just a silver necklace, and it has her initials on the back, and then it says an M on the front, and I, I love it. Do yeah, you have it? Can, can you show it to us? I don't have it with me. It is at my other house. I wish I had it, though. I would show you. That's so sweet. Uh, do you have any other souvenirs from American Idol that you can share? Um, I think I do. I'll go get it. Okay, so while MK is getting her souvenir... Savian, you celebrated your birthday in L.A. Yes, I did. It was awesome. So fun. And you met uh, M.K. after the show? Yeah, yeah. I met I met with M.K. and uh, Emmanuel. We, uh, we chilled after the show, and I, I chilled with pretty much all the contestants after the show. Uh, got to do that. That was really fun. And... Is school winding down for you? School? School, yeah. You go to school. Yeah, it is. It's winding down. Uh, <laughs> I'll have what? I think this will be the last month of school uh, for me until, until fall, and then I'll graduate in December. So. What are you doing this uh, summer? What would you say? Summer. What are you doing this summer? This summer, um, I'm probably going to uh, go to L.A., um, and do some writing with a couple of my friends that I met at Idol. Um, a couple of people who made it to the top 40 and the top 70, somewhere around there. So, and then probably write write a couple with uh, probably Alex and uh, Caleb, write with them as well. Well, they're going to go on tour, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm probably going to catch them before uh, before they go on tour and do a couple. Or I'll probably write a couple of songs with them. Have you been writing after your idle experience? Of course. Yeah, of course. That's not going to stop me from writing. I, I do a lot of writing. I actually I just wrote half of a song this morning waking up, so you got to finish it. It's really fun. That's the sucky part. When you don't have a full song, you have to kind of force yourself to, read, to write the rest. So i got to force myself to write the rest of the song. But, yeah, I do it. Like, it actually, I think it's funny because... And I'm actually writing a little more than I was before, so I guess I, I kind of had an inspiration. In a way. So that's really nice. No writers. <laughs> How about you, MK? Do you write songs? I think she's frozen. I uh, frozen in time. <laughs> there she is. Here, let me see if I can click back to her. There she is. She's maybe she will pop back back up. Hey. There she is. There I hear, you. We hear you. So, writing songs. MK. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Do you write songs? Um, I do write songs. Um, I I write songs all the time. <laughs> okay, so that's one thing. One thing I I really think this year, like this year, and I'm not saying this about any of the other past years of Idol, but I really think a lot of the mainly I'd say probably probably the top 100 of the contestants this year. Like I feel like we all were very like very not just you know like musicians like playing guitars but I feel like a lot of us wrote our own songs and stuff too I mean yeah a lot of people didn't showcase them but I feel like a lot of a lot of especially you know like the top 40 I feel like like the top 48 I feel like we all probably wrote music so I 
think that was a really cool thing that they did this year because they they made sure to ask everybody when they were there on Idol, like, did we write our own music or, like, did we, did we perform our own music and all that type of things. So I feel like, uh-oh, she fell out. <laughs> uh-oh. <clears throat> Hopefully she knows how to get back. Yeah, but I feel like, I really feel like, I feel like that was a really cool thing, um, you know, uh, with having, you know, like, Alex, and obviously I know Alex and Caleb did their own music. Oh, yeah, here she is. She's back on. Um but yeah, so like like I know for sure like MK, Alex, Caleb, Majesty, uh Jess, like all of us, I know we wrote our own music. So and I think I think what I know obviously everyone knows Alex performed his original. Um, but even even Jess, uh Caleb did an original on Idol. Uh there are there were a lot of people who actually did original music. So I think that was really cool that that they kind of favored towards the people who did their own music a lot this year. So I think that was a that was a really cool thing because you don't you don't have that on any other show. MK, yeah, you have some show and tell. Yeah. Okay. So I this bow tie was made for me and I love it. I wore it on the show. I wore it for Drops of Jupiter and it's amazing. And someone made it special for me, and I am in love with it. I think it's so cool and super cute. Uh, it's pink and black, and it's leather. You know, you said somebody, was that a fan? Um, <coughs> no, I think it was made for my wardrobe, but I got to keep it, and I, I love it. I mean, it's it's so wonderful. It's handmade, and it's so beautiful. And I'm so glad. Um, yeah, cool. so I love that. And then one of the reporters... I, I said I liked his hat because I'm my thing. Uh, my hats are my thing. And I said I liked his hat, so he gave it to me, and it's amazing. And I'm holding in a rocket all the time. I love this hat. And then another, another a fan sent me and Keith Urban matching shirts um, that I think are really sweet, and they say on them, the world is changing. Oh, sweet. So I really like that. I think they're they're really sweet. Um, so yeah, I, I these are these are my fun things that I brought home from Idol. The world is changing. You have that on your Twitter uh, mm -hmm. profile. Mm -hmm. That um, when I first when I came out on the show, um, Jennifer Lopez had um, had said the world is changing, and Keith Urban sort of thought about it and was like, "Yep, the world is changing." And I think that was sort of like, that was like my my hashtag for a while. That was like the the thing, you know. And I think um, um, I think it's true. I mean, the world is changing, and I'm I'm really happy that I get to be a part of that change. Yeah, and if you notice, I I checked that hashtag uh, the other day. It's really cool, like that. That really, pretty much, is your hashtag because a lot of people, cool. a lot of people are like posting pictures of, uh, of MK, and they always use that hashtag. The world is changing, so that's really cool. Yeah, that is super cool. I'm really excited about these shirts too. They're really, that's like really sweet, and I'm really glad they wrote me a little letter too that said that it was like a whole new T-shirt idea for them, and I'm really glad. So. Um, it's super cool. Oh, what's it like to be a role model now? Um, you know, I mean, it's the some of the like messages that I've gotten are just like so sweet, and and like I've cried sometimes. Like sometimes people like say these things that are just like so meaningful and like so impressive and, and amazing. Like you give me hope to like continue all these things, and, and like or like this one girl said that she was afraid to come out to her parents because she was afraid that they'd be mad but since her parents loved me and voted for me on American Idol that she felt like I that she could do it and wow. i mean i think that like those are so those are so cool like i have gay parents and i live in san francisco a very liberal and open city um so i was very blessed um to be gay and raised here um but that doesn't mean that i i don't understand the struggle of coming out i mean it's definitely a hard thing to do and um I can only imagine how hard it would be um, to be somewhere that's not as accepting as, as San Francisco and to do that. And uh, I'm very proud of all the people for, that, uh, that I gave hope to do that for. I mean, I think that's, like, so wonderful, and I'm so proud of them for all doing that. Like, that's so cool. So. That's awesome. All right, so I have a good question. Okay, what? 
and we probably will we'll both agree with this because <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, what person do you think will, like, out of the top ten of y'all, who's going to be the funnest person to be with on tour? First person to what? Who's going to be the funnest person, like, the most fun on tour, being on tour with? Oh, man. I mean, I think everyone's really fun in their own little way. I think... Who's if, the one going to make you laugh? Who's, like, the most humorous? Yeah. I think the jokester of the whole thing, definitely Caleb. Caleb, Caleb. yeah. <laughs> I love Caleb. Hilarious. Like, he can I can't literally. tell you how many times I've played back the I Love You Puppy, how many times I've played back that song just to see Caleb's little dance at the end. Like, <laughs> I can't tell you. that is He's so funny. Dude, I swear. Like, people don't get it. Like, like seriously, like when they like made that joke about him, like being half Jack Black, half Meatloaf, it's so true. Like he is like hilarious. Like if you spend a whole day with him, like I spent a couple of hours with him that night, and I kid you not, I laughed the whole time. Oh, like, it's so funny, and it's constantly you always know when he's in the room because yeah. you, he'll you'll just like hear this wail out of nowhere, and you're like, oh, Caleb's here, like <laughs> yeah. Caleb's here. <laughs> so yeah, yeah definitely. He's he's a light man. That dude is hilarious. He is. He is quite a crack up. Oh, we have another fan question here coming fast and furious again from Joni. Uh, she wants to know if she can meet you on tour. Is that tour going to be in New Jersey? Um, oh. I don't actually have the the dates or shows yet, so I don't know. But if it is there, um, if, if we do have a show in New Jersey, which I'm sure we'll have one in that area, um, then... Definitely come, make a sign, and I will definitely see you there, man. Um, I, I think I think that we'll probably have a show in that area, probably. But we don't have an official. <clears throat> I think I was seeing a rumor, like they, but like they post like the tour dates earlier. But someone posted, like they did, like this little small post of I think the cities that they're supposedly going to. And I think New Jersey was on there. So she may get what she wants. <laughs> Here, here's another question uh, or statement, I guess, from Joni. Uh, she wants to know if you can have a Twitter party soon. Um, I am a little bit Twitter dumb. I don't really know how to do anything uh, except for, like, post things and repost things. <laughs> um, but I'm... I'm I'm down to do that. I would love to do that. I don't know how. <laughs> so you should tweet me how to do that, and then I will do it. <laughs> Actually, Emily and Kristen, they have had Twitter parties. Why don't we try to get you guys together, and they can teach you what teach you the ropes. Yeah, definitely. I'll definitely text those two, and we'll figure it out. Yeah, so you can have a Twitter party for your fans. Uh, did you achieve your American Idol goal? Yes, I did. I had the whole time on Idol, I had set small goals because I think the best way to achieve a big goal is to have little goals along the way so you don't give up and you still like, you build up confidence, you know, as you go along. And I think, so that was my, the way I was looking at it through the, from the beginning and my first goal was just to get the, the golden ticket and then the next one was to go to Hollywood week and, and make it through all these little steps and then, um, made it into the top, top, uh, 10, and um, and then the top 13, and then the top 10 again, and I mean, I wanted to just, I mean, my next goal is to be on tour. Of course, like, my ending goal would have been to win, but at the same time, I'm on tour, and, like, that's insane, and that's a big deal. Um, I've never auditioned for the show before, so I feel like getting on tour and never auditioning before is a, is a, good, is a good goal and a good place to be, and I'm very proud of myself for achieving it. Five years from now, where would you like to be? Five years from now, oh man, I would like to be. I would like to have hopefully more than an album, more than one album, and and just gigs all the time. I just want to. I just want to make music. I mean, that's that's my life. I mean, um, even without a five-year plan, like my life plan is just to make music until I can't. You know, I think that's that's it. You got a title for your your album? I don't. I keep on thinking about that. Everyone keeps asking me. Um, I really don't know. 
it's either going to have something to do with San Francisco or my name. <laughs> so, yeah. And it's going to have some horns. Oh yeah, horns and strings and all that. A big band. So you you flew to New York and you appeared on the um, Kelly and Michael show. Can you talk about that experience? Yeah, that was cool. Kelly and Michael was really fun. Um, <clears throat> Kelly was there. So it was actually Robin from what is it? It's like a Good Morning America, right? Oh, sweet. And yeah. She is awesome. I mean, she's an inspiration also as well. Um, um, so I I mean, it was just a, it was a really good time. Um, I sang All of Me, and that was, I think, uh, that's one of my favorite songs right now, and probably for a long time. Um, so, I mean, I was just super stoked to, to be there and to have that opportunity. Um, the audience was amazing and lovely and, and very awesome to sing in front of, and um, it was just a good experience. I mean, I, I was in New York for a very short amount of time. I was very sick. I was on antibiotics the whole time, um, so... That was not awesome, but um, it, it worked out. It was a good time. Did you go to any shows when you were in New York, or you just flew in and flew out? I was there for less than 24 hours, so I didn't even get the chance to do that. But, wow. Um, yeah. Have you been to New York before? Yes, I have uh, family there. I think actually New York was the first place that I ever flew when I was a tiny little baby. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now you snowboard. Are you a skater? Do you skateboard? I am a skater. I skateboarded way before I snowboarded. Um, so I'm I'm definitely a skater. Where do you skate in San Francisco? Do you have skateboard parks? Um, we do have parks, but I don't I don't skate parks. I actually skate um, street. So I just I just skate around. Um, me and my friends like to go to Golden Gate Park on Sundays. Um, the roads are closed through the whole park, so it's just. Um, one whole big road and there's no cars on it, so people skate and, and bike and, you know, bring their kids and run around and play games. Um, so we skate there sometimes. Um, I skate uh, down Valencia and Mission all the time. It's just like a straight straight away. It's, it's pretty fun. Um, the thing over here, there's so many hills, so we, we bomb hills all the time. That's, that's the thing to do is just go up to the top of the hill and just go really fast <laughs> down the hill. I mean, that's... That's the that's the whole fun part in San Francisco with skateboards. Now you have big hills in San Francisco. Have you fallen? Oh yeah. Um, I think a few days ago actually, I uh, I was like coming around a corner and this car pulled out right in front of me and I, I had to bail and I fell. Um, but yeah, I fall all the time. I mean, that just kind of comes with the comes with the territory. <laughs> oh wow. That, that's pretty risky business now that, you know, <laughs> you, you, you got to keep yourself together to go on tour. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I'll be okay. I'm not doing anything crazy. Just just having fun. <laughs> Do any of the other finalists skate? Um, I'm not sure. I know that I know that they can. I know, I think CJ mentioned that he can skateboard. I don't know if any of them would consider themselves skaters, but I think, I think they, a, a few of them do know how to skateboard. So you have a longboard? Um, I actually, yeah, I do have a longboard. I know for sure Majesty longboards. Majesty? Oh, yeah, Majesty does longboard, yeah. Yeah, Majesty longboards. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah, dude, I totally, I love my longboard. That's like, sometimes I go over to the beach on, on like, the little boardwalk, and I'm just like, that, that's a longboard. That's a longboard day. Yeah, everyone longboards here in college. So that's, that's what I was thinking. Okay, well, Joni says that she already knows that the tour is going to be in New Jersey, and she can't wait to meet you. She's been going uh, two years in a row. Oh, that's awesome. That's so cool, man. I'm super excited to meet you, too. That's sweet. Oh, wait, uh, you have a fan uh, named Kelly. Oh, uh, no, Kimberly Grant. She's Kimberly so Grant, that's right. Here, I'll put it up here on the big board. She says she met you in New York last week outside uh, the show. Oh, like, hey, yeah, we took a picture together. I saw that on Instagram. Pictures, that's right. Let's uh, talk about some of the pictures that are posted up on the Internet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a screen share here. Uh, right here. And let me click on... Okay, so can you see the screen? Oh, look, it's you and Casey. I can't see it yet. 
Oh, you can't see it? There we go. Now I see it. Okay, so I typed your name into Google Images, and here are the images that uh, pop up. Uh, which image would you like to talk about? What image has a story, a meaningful story for you? Um, I mean, they all kind of do. Okay, this one over here um, with the, with me in the hat and the leather jacket. Um, hat and leather jacket. This one right here. Yeah. With the Coke and... Yeah. That, those, that, that whole, like, series of pictures was really cool because um, that was the first day. That was after, actually after the first live show when we uh, went to the red carpet and did all these interviews. And that was, like, the big... The, one, the first biggest part of all of it. And uh, that was actually, like, that was such a cool experience to, like, be on. Uh, it was a blue carpet for Idol, but they called it a red carpet. So it was actually, like, that was really cool to, like, be able to do that, just, like, going, like talking to people and, like, explaining yourself and your music and, like, really getting people to know you. So that was actually, like, one of the coolest experiences, I think. Um, so that was that was that one. How about this? You don't have your hat on? You, you've got a different hairstyle? That was at the very beginning. Uh, there's a couple other ones, too, where I don't have hats on. I didn't I didn't have a hat on for quite a few of the of the shows. Um, I, I felt like they were... I would love to have worn a hat all the time. <laughs> like, all the time. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel like people sort of wanted to see something different a little bit. And, uh, you know, um, I, that's kind of why I did it. I mean, I, the stylist definitely pushed it a little bit and wanted to play around with my hair, you know make it stand up. I pretty much have the same standard hair hairstyle every day. Um, so other than that, um, they wanted to play around with it, so I was down. I mean, I I love my hair. It's I love playing with it, um, but I also love hats. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, Ben Ben said Ben said uh, last week he wears a hat. He hates his hair. <laughs> really, I like his hair. He was he was actually really dapper. The the day yeah. um, when he, he was. yeah during the movie during the cinema week he was very dapper he looked really cool here you've got some uh, red pink stuff going on in your hair that was cool the fiery look that was sweet yeah those are pretty cool it took so long to get those in and they kind of hurt like <laughs> they were clipped in there and uh, it was it was pretty interesting um, we had to like so much hairspray like if you had touched my hair. It was like a rock because we had to like curl them and then they like, put them in there and then like spray them. It was so it was tough, but like they stayed after after a while. Are you saying perfect? Yeah, I did. Can you talk about that performance? Um, I mean, I think that was um, I think it was a good performance um, until I flubbed it a little bit, and you know, like that that happens. Like I'm not really I'm I'm not really upset about it because. Um, Everyone who's a musician is going to mess up at some point in their life, you know, in their career. And it's just, it's not really something that you can get hard on yourself about. Um, there's just really no point. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it's upsetting. And, like, I wish I didn't do it. But, like, other than that, it's kind of like that that happens. I mean, everybody does that. You know, even J-Lo and Harry Connor Jr. and Keith Urban. So it's like, it's not really that upsetting to me. Here's something that has to do with makeup. M MK with makeup. Yeah, um, people made a big deal about that. Um, I I had no problem with it. Um, everyone was wearing makeup. Like even the boys were wearing a lot of makeup, so it didn't really bother me um, at all. Um, I do I do wear makeup on a regular life basis, which is. Um, funny that uh, everyone sort of was like, don't let them change you and all this stuff, because, I mean, I, I don't think that it really did at all. Um, so, I mean, I, I had no problem with the makeup, but uh, at the same time, uh, I did want to keep it minimal, so it was sort of like, if you look at me versus the other girls, um, they were very, very done up, and I wasn't very done up. Um, they did do a little bit more when I sang uh, Perfect, they had a little bit extra and like made my eyes pop a little bit more because it was more colorful and the whole outfit itself and my hair was up and um, so it, it sort of just depended on the night. But for the most part, I kept it pretty minimal. I gotta say that pink suit that you wore—that was killer. That was. Killer. I, I love the pink suit, man. I love that one. Uh, let's talk about your jacket. I've seen this jacket a couple of times. 
What's the story yeah. about the jacket? Oh, I was going to say that. I love that jacket. I, I was going to tell you that the day uh, we were there. I was like, man, that's a sick jacket. I like it. Yeah, I actually, I love that jacket. Um, it's Pink Dolphin, and um, they just opened up a Pink Dolphin store in the I Hague. Dolphin. And um, so I was super stoked about that. I mean, I, I, I love their stuff, man. I mean, I have a bunch of it. I have uh, my my bag, like my suitcase bag is Pink Dolphin, and my jacket I have hats. I have, like, all, I just, I love their stuff, man. Um, so that's, that's my jacket. And now you wore that... Um on Kelly and Michael. I did. That's probably one of the warmest jackets I have. Um, so New York's pretty cold right now, and that's that's why I wore it there. Uh, this is your audition in San Francisco. Yeah. And what what did you sing? Well, first I sang um, "Cloud Nine by John Legend, and then they didn't play that one. But for I did do um, a John Legend song first. Um, I cover so many of his songs. Like I, I love his music so much, and I love his newer album that just came out. Um, and as, um, I sang, aside from that, I sang "If I Were Your Woman" by Gladys Knight, um, mm -hmm. and that's a classic. I did that one in high school, and I love, I love that song a lot. Um, right. So that's why I did that one. You're supporting. Um, you got that camo look going in your pants. Uh, yeah. You you like camo? Um, I I don't know. I do actually have like I guess I do. I never really thought about it. Um, I I wouldn't say that I like look for camo over other things. Like it's not like I have a thing with camo. I think I just have found some clothes that look good on me that are camo. <laughs> uh, here you are on at the uh, in the press tent. Can you talk about? The press tent. That was actually that was also on the red blue carpet. Um, oh. That first that first week. I see. Okay, moving right along. Looking for some more pictures here. There you go with the beanie. I love the beanies now. The beanie. Here you go. Here you are with the beanie. I like that. <laughs> oh yeah, my beanie. Um, that's a Savion look. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Savion. I was channeling my inner Savion. I'm channeling you. <laughs> okay, moving right along here. See any pictures? Here you are with the group. Oh, yeah, that was us. Again at the blue red carpet, which was really cool. And this is uh, the 13th, top 13. Yep. Yeah. Everybody has smiles. Any pictures here that uh, you'd like to talk about? Hey, look, there's you and Casey. Yeah. Now, Casey is also your vocal coach. Um, she's not my vocal coach. We just we make music together and, and we oh, sweet. we do that all the time. Oh, I see. Okay, I so. Do you guys sing together? Yeah, we do. We sing together all the time. We we have a couple videos on uh, on her Instagram and probably mine too of us uh, jamming together. I have to look them up. Yeah, dude, check it. She's dope. <laughs> uh, what kind of music does she like? She sings opera. Oh wow! Opera. opera. Mm -hmm. Talk so about that's, that's okay. where classical comes in. <laughs> talk, talk, about, talk about your kicks here. Nice. Uh, those ones, some Tim's. Those were that was actually really funny. I was just staying at a hotel by the um, with uh, by this like shoe store that was like going out of business, and those were like probably like twenty dollars. And I was just like, oh my oh. gosh! So I did. That was it. That's that's what happened. Do they give you a budget to spend on clothes? Um, they do, but we don't. We don't. We just sort of give the stylist an idea of what we're looking for, and then they they get the clothes. Oh, okay. So because you got these shoes uh, that didn't come out of the budget, that came out of your your money. Yeah. And they they're okay with that that you bring in your own stuff. Yeah, definitely. Okay. L looking for some uh, here. Here you are with a dog. I've seen this dog in a number of pictures. 
Yeah, that's Bowie. Oh. Bowie, whose dog is Bowie? He's Zan's dog. He's uh, one of the people with 19. And, um, yeah, that's his cute little puppy who got so much bigger every time we, we saw him. We would come back for, like, a week at a time. And uh, he'd be, he was so little at the beginning and just kept growing. He's, he's a super hyper cool dog. He's tight. Oh, yeah, I know that. I have my mom. Here. I got my mom a Yorkie, and he's so hyper. Oh, my That's God. That's awesome. Here's a tattoo. Oh, wow. Oh, give me a tattoo. I did. I got a tattoo while I was on Idol. Um, it's this diamond. I love it. It's one of my favorites, I think. What uh, What's the meaning behind it? I don't know. I mean, I just kind of like, I just, I had this idea that I wanted to get a diamond for a really long time. Um, I just kind of like I kind of like it. I, I just think, um, I don't know if there's a specific meaning behind it, just, you know, um, just to shine, you know, just to, you know, be really a diamond. It's it's a bright, awesome thing that, yeah, like, diamond. Means it has so much worth, you know, diamonds have so much worth, and I think, like, having a diamond, just, like, it's, it's about valuing yourself, I guess, for me. Here you are in your, uh, in your jacket. <laughs> Yeah. You, you just got the word, right? Yeah. You made it. I I just wasn't, I had no idea what to expect. Like, I didn't have, like, I had nothing. Like, usually I feel like when something like that is happening, you kind of have an intuition of how it's going to go, and I literally just had no idea that I, like, I didn't want to get my hopes up, so I wasn't trying to tell myself that I was going to make it, but I also, like, didn't want to say, you know, I wanted to have confidence. So I... I had literally no idea what was about to happen, and, like, I was one of the later people that uh, went in to get the news, so, like, watching Amazing People come out without it, and then, like, watching, like, Amazing People come out and be exciting, like, be excited about it, like, it was such a weird, crazy experience, um, so that was, like, really, that was a very emotional point, and, uh, that was, we were so tired at that point, like, this was the very end of Hollywood week, and we were just exhausted, and I remember before I went into that room, I was knocked out on the floor, like, the whole day, I was just, me and, and Jillian and a bunch of other people, we just got some blankets and just laid out on the floor and just slept, like, for, like, four hours <laughs> on the floor, and then um, had to get up and do this, um, and so we were just exhausted and tired, and I lost my voice at that point, I couldn't talk, um, so, that, it was just, it was crazy, but also so fun, <laughs> so wonderful, it was amazing. See, that's, that's what, that's the point that I was trying to get over with everybody, I was like, y'all don't know, like, everyone's voice was so exhausted after that, that, like, I mean, just, yeah. everyone was hoarse, like, there's no way that, that anybody could sound amazing like they really wanted to sound at that time. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was all, that was, like, I think one of the coolest points also in the show. I just think, like, that was, that was so emotional and crazy, and everyone got caught so off guard so many times that day. It was yeah. a very emotional point in the show. Well, I'm about at the end of the page, so... Unless there's a special photo here that I have not seen, uh, is this you leaving the? It is you leaving the show. What was it like saying goodbye to your fellow contestants? Um, saying goodbye is always the hardest part, but I was just I, I was happy to to have have taken any part in the show. I mean, it was just like such a good experience that there wasn't really anything bad to feel bad about. Um, I mean, I I could sit here all day and, like, pick apart little things that went wrong and, like, why I didn't make it or why I didn't win. But, like, in, in the reality of the situation, you have to just, like, look at it and say, like, how many people would kill to be the top ten, like, the tenth finalist of American Idol, you know? And, like, mm -hmm. how big of a deal that is and how, how cool it is and how much of, like, it's not the end of anything. It's, like, the beginning of your amazing music career that you can make yourself have, so it's really not the end of anything, except for, um, 
except for the TV show, but you can take all of those things with you. And, like, I know that I have fans now, and I know that I'll stick with my fans, and I know that I'll be out there making shows and, and making albums for them, and hopefully they stick with me too. And, um, you know, that's, that's sort of like a teamwork effort. But as far as, like, saying goodbye to everybody on the show, um, I'm going to miss them and miss jamming with them all the time, and that was, like, a really good time in my life. But it's going to be over for everybody at a certain point, and um, it just happened to be a little bit sooner for me. Yeah, and that that's one thing that, that that my parents told me to look at it is is like you know, if you think about it, only one person doesn't get eliminated off of the show. Yeah, if you think about it like that, it, it makes it feel a little bit better. Yeah, and so that's kind of how I had to look at it. Uh, but one of the coolest things I I want to ask you is you know who who was one of your biggest inspirations musically growing up. Oh, man. I mean, the three people that I turn to no matter what I'm feeling like, if I'm, like, super excited. I mean, music, I turn to music for everything, kind of. Like, I, I know you probably do this, too. Um, like, when you're really sad, you turn on some, some music that just, like, like you know, it's just sad, and, you know, you listen to it. Or when you're, like, super excited about something, you turn on this, like, super exciting record or... And, and just with every emotion, there's a, a song or, like, an artist or something that you can play, you know, to, like... Uh, to deeper that feeling and just like really get into it or like get out of it, you know, like music can just help with that so intensely. And I think the three people that have really been there for me through this idol journey was number one, definitely Alan Stone, just because I I just am like I like if there's anyone I wish I made his music like I wish that I wrote all of that that like it's so good. And then um, definitely um, Matt Corby. Uh, oh my God, MK, are you so serious right now? I love Matt Corby. Yeah, Matt Corby oh. is definitely is up there. I just think he's oh. so talented and like so good. Resolution. And his lyrics, like you said, I'm a lyrics person. So uh, Matt Corby for sure. Um, what a beautiful human being. And then um, also Ben Howard. I oh, I love Ben Howard. Ben Howard has has had a really big. Um, inspir he's been a really big inspiration to me, especially um, for my guitar. Um, mm -hmm. When I started, like, I think that, like, I stopped taking lessons uh, a couple months after I started, um, and I sort of self-taught after that. Mm -hmm. And um, I think learning uh, Ben Howard songs, like, made me ten times better at the guitar. Like, they're so complicated, but so, like, like and they're so intricate, and, like, they have so much, like, power to them, and they're soft... And you learn how you learn like where to play softly, and you know you learn all this stuff. And I think like his music like has so much to it that it's like super interesting. And when you learn one of his songs, you're learning so much about music and so much about yourself too. So I think like those three guys are like have really helped me out, and that's who I've been really listening to on uh, this idol journey. Resolution by Matt Corby. Oh my God, that song. Oh yeah, I actually learned Resolution while I was at Idol, and I also learned Brother. Oh. Both amazing songs. Uh, Joni's got another. Joni here has another question here. I think she's a huge fan of yours. She wants to know what song would you have liked to have sung on the show that you didn't get to. Um, well, if I could have sang on the show, that is so hard. There are so many songs that I, you know, like that I would want to do. That's such a good question. Um, and I think about this probably. Um, probably another Alan Stone song. I just, like, really like him. Um, but it, aside from Alan Stone, I definitely would, would have loved to do Lemonade by Jeremy Passion. Oh, nice. Yeah. There, I had a problem getting that question up. Uh-oh. Yeah, I, oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, I, I, ju I, just, I just did it. I feel like if any song that I wish I would have sang, that they, if if I could have done, would be "Do I Want to Know" by the Arctic Monkeys. That's a good one, dude. And I like. I'm a huge fan of the Arctic Monkeys. I love blues rock. Like blues rock is like my thing. Like that's definitely the type of thing I want to go into. With alt rock, blues rock. So doing something like. Because, like, when I know, like, when Sam was doing Come Together, I was like, oh, my God, he's doing my song. It's, like, one of my top favorite songs of all time. So when he did that, and then uh, I just wish, I wish, wish, wish I could have done something by the Black Keys. Because they're, like, one of my favorite bands. And 
but you can't read them. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Here, here is a big question. Big, huge question. Somebody wants to know what your favorite color is because she is making you a gift that she's going to give you on the tour. Oh, that's so, so cool. awesome. Um, I, I, I definitely tried to make it very um, very obvious on the show what my favorite color was um, because I definitely incorporated the color in every single outfit that I wore, um, which was a very big point of mine. And I definitely at one point even wore an entire suit that was my favorite color. <laughs> my favorite color is pink. <laughs> there you go. Having a hard major problem getting these questions to display. I don't know it. Okay, well, we've been at this for an hour and a half. You can believe that. An hour and a half has gone by. Wow. And I, I think if we don't stop, we could probably go for, you know, another half hour, hour. <laughs> Maybe we can save it up for next week when we talk to Majesty Rose. Yeah, okay. You can join that. You can join with me. Yeah, I'll definitely. I'll be here. I, I would. I definitely would love to continue this conversation. But I also, the sun just came out in San Francisco, and it only decides to come out sometimes for a very short amount of times. So I'm gonna skate. <laughs> he, she's gonna go skate. Okay. Well, thanks so much, MK, for spending an hour and a half with us today. Saving Right, Waco, Texas. Check him out on Twitter. Saving J Wright on Twitter. MK, we can find you on Instagram and Twitter, is that right? Yes, and Facebook as well. And Facebook, do you have any closing comments? Everybody, thank you so much for watching. It's such an amazing experience, and definitely keep watching and come to the tour because it's going to be super dope. And this Hangout is posted on YouTube, and you can leave questions, more questions on the YouTube uh, URL, and hopefully we can get back to you. Okay, we'll see you next week with a panel of uh, Savian and hopefully MK when we talk to <laughs> Majesty Rose. And before we'll, we go... Oh, before we go, here we go. MK, okay. I just want to thank you because I, I saw uh, when you posted that picture of me on, on uh, Instagram, that was the sweetest thing that anybody had done. So that, that's sweet. Thank you for doing that. Of course. I, I actually... It's, it's no longer there anymore because I got a little bit of guilt and a little bit of hate because I didn't post it about everybody else. So oh, it's okay. it was there at one point. I did, I did put that up there. Yeah, but thank you for doing it. It was sweet. Of course, dude, of course. I truly believe what I said, too. But, yeah, we can communicate on Twitter. That's yeah, fine. We'll, we'll talk. Okay. Right. Thanks so much. See you next See you next week. All right, Jack. And you don't have to. You don't have to. You guys don't have to leave. We're going to be in the green room for a minute. Okay. Oh, see everybody. Okay. Bye. Bye.